What is up, everyone? My name is Jonathan. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are doing a comparison between Lightroom HDR and Photoshop HDR for real estate interior photo. If you are new here, thank you for joining me. Feel free to hit the like button before you go. All of my links and stuff are in the description below. If you have already done all those things and clicked on something before you left last time, thank you. So without further ado, we are going to jump into Lightroom. And we're in a Lightroom. We're going to do which photo should we do? Let's do this one of the, there's a little vacant house. Let's do this one right here. So we're, I'm not gonna do anything to the photos. I just wanna see which one provides the best result. This is seven photos taken one stop apart. So we're just going to select all of these. So you can do that by clicking on one end of them and then clicking on the other end while holding shift. Or you can hit control holding control and click on each individual photo, whichever way you prefer. So now we're going to go to HDR and then this little window will pop up and then we wait for it to do its thing. And then I have auto align, auto settings, all of that stuff set. If you don't want any of that stuff, don't do it. So this will merge the photos and then auto settings will change these settings uh, what it thinks is best but we'll let it do it's what it thinks it's best and then we will uh, change these settings to whatever we want them to be and here let's see which one is it this one this is the edited what it thinks is best so we're going to drop those all the way down get our window back a little bit you know this really isn't this isn't bad not bad this door is super black. The door is pretty much, I don't know, if that could be, we could fix that, but as far as straight out of the HDR system machine, it's not terrible. So now let's go do the same thing, but for Photoshop. Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. So here we are. Uh, let's see if we can bring this back some too much so we would want it to be like this bright obviously the door's not gone so that's a little better but man then we lose all the highlights I've never used this before so we are figuring this out as we go I want to keep most of the highlights outside that's kind of the whole point bring up the saturation some because it's definitely looking a little dull what does this do I'm not 100% sure I'm not seeing a difference oh a little bit I saw it in the window definitely not the greatest for what we're doing Nope, that's baked. Photorealistic. Nope. No bueno. So, no, I have it. Just realized I don't have that all the way over here. So let's go back and let's ditch this one and this one and see what we get. Maybe, maybe it just doesn't appreciate having it's too wide. It's too wide. So let's click on this one, this one, this one this one and this one so let's try this okay so here we are yeah you know that's just not that's not that much better I just wow that's don't no mm -mm, mm -mm. no these are just uh, as far as maybe man I don't know this is tough this is tough so maybe if we do something like something, something like something, and then I want those to stay. We want the shadows to be there. We definitely want a lot more vibrance and saturation than what we have. But it's just ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly, you know? 
This is not good. It's not good at all. This is painful, actually. Like, come on, Photoshop. You can do better than this. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is better. Like, the door's gone, but this is better. This is just with nothing else. Uh, I just, the light is better. I mean, the... Uh, the retention of the dynamic range to me is better in Photoshop, but we can't have that and lose everything else. Like this just doesn't even look, this looks completely unnatural. This at least makes sense. It's not as good. The outside's not as good. The light's a little more blown out. The door is gone, but it looks way better straight. I mean, maybe this isn't a fair comparison. Feel free to let me know in the comments below whether this is a fair comparison between Photoshop HDR and Lightroom HDR. But as of as it stands right now, I would never use this. And this isn't the best photo ever. This isn't how I would edit an interior photo. But it's still usable in a, like... Yeah, that this is not this this is not usable. This does not look normal. This does not look real. This looks awful. Overbaked. Overbaked. That concludes our comparison between Lightroom and Photoshop. Thank you for watching. If you have not yet subscribed and you want future content like this, make sure to hit the hit the subscribe button before you leave. Make sure to hit the like button before you go. Check out one of the links in the description before before you leave. Click on a link before you go. It helps me out a little bit. If you want help optimizing your YouTube channel, click on the TubeBuddy link in the very bottom of the description. You don't get anything special, so to speak, but there is a free version, there is a paid version, and there is a hefty discount for those with under 1,000 subscribers. Hello, that's me, at least for now. Try to change that. Hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below as to what you would do to save one comparison or the other, whether that be Photoshop or Lightroom. Is it editing before before HDR? Is it editing before that? Or is it editing after editing after HDR? Which one would you do? How would you do it? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Lightroom actually won on this one. Kind of surprised. That is all. Hit the like button. Subscribe. We will see you in the next one.